Do I believe there's a tremendous profit that is made from vaccines and specifically from making sure that kids show up in school? Yes. No. So a few days ago, Mayim Bialik put out a video, anti-vaxxers and COVID, and in the thumbnail it says, am I an anti-vaxxer? Mayim Bialik, most of you probably know, she's on the Big Bang Theory and also Blossom when she was a, a child, little baby, baby Bialik. <laughs> That's pretty cute. She's also vegan or was vegan, I don't know if she currently is, and she put out an attachment parenting book called Beyond the Sling, uh, like eight years ago. And in that book, she talks about vaccinations briefly and says that she personally chose not to vaccinate her kids. So ever since then, she's been known as anti-vax, right? Well, in this video, the good thing, so here's the good thing about the video, she says that she is going to get the COVID vaccine whenever it comes out and that she's also going to get the flu vaccine this year. For all of my friends out there and now enemies who might tend to be icked out by vaccine ingredients, I'm gonna say this with love. We all need to take a deep breath. I'm being absolutely serious. This virus is a serious challenge to our world and to our economy, and it's going to be uncomfortable as we try and keep this under better control than our country has. This is awesome. I love that she's promoting this to her audience. You know, probably a lot of people, crunchy granola type people who still think vaccines cause autism. So yeah, that's great. Unfortunately, that's about it in terms of the good stuff in this video. The rest kind of sucks. I wrote a book about 10 years ago about my experience parenting. And at the time, my children had not received the typical schedule of vaccines. But I have never, not once, said that vaccines are not valuable, not useful, or not necessary because they are. Vaccine hesitancy, also known as anti-vaccination or anti-vax, is a reluctance or refusal to be vaccinated or to have one's children vaccinated against contagious diseases despite the availability of vaccination services. The term encompasses outright refusal to vaccinate, delaying vaccines, accepting vaccines but remaining uncertain about their use, or using certain vaccines but not others. Mayim has promoted the idea that kids today get way too many vaccines and way too many, you know, all at one time. She has promoted delayed scheduling. She has promoted Dr. Sears, Dr. Gordon, these people who run in the anti-vaccine movement circle, whatever you want to call it, and who promote delayed scheduling. So yeah, Mayim Bialik is anti-vax or vaccine hesitant, if she likes that better. Is she as bad as anti-vaxxers who are completely against any and all vaccines and who think anyone and everyone is being paid off by big pharma and who think any kid who dies from an infectious disease kind of deserved it because, you know, survival of the fittest. The people who believe that any vaccine should be avoided and that the only way to have true immunity is achieved by actually getting a disease. Some people even believe that the government is poisoning us with vaccines. I'm not that person. I'm not that person. No, of course she's not as bad as those people. I have no doubt she doesn't believe any of that. But she is still promoting misinformation and still promoting vaccine hesitancy. There is a reason her comment section is full of anti-vaxxers, people who won't even get vaccinated for COVID. It's not just like, you know, non-believers like me who thought she was anti-vax ever since Beyond the Sling. It's also anti-vaxxers who thought she was anti-vax. That's why they're mad. That's why they're mad at her because they thought that she was one of them. So maybe instead of being so defensive and kind of acting like we're all idiots or, or just really mean. I've received a ton of negative press about this. And to be quite honest, most of it was inaccurate. The internet jury decided that I was a danger to my children, a disgrace to science, and a member of the Hollywood elite responsible for the killing of babies. Yes. Maybe she should start by apologizing for not being forthright with her views. Maybe be upfront about what it is she actually believes. She gives us a couple little hints in this video, which I'll talk about in a minute, but it's still pretty vague. 
Which vaccines does she find problematic and why? Why did she change her mind about vaccinating her kids? She says she's not going into detail because it's personal. They're her kids, you know, she's not gonna talk about medical history. Here's the truth. The truth is I delayed vaccinations for reasons that you don't necessarily get to know about simply because you follow me on social media. As of today, my children may not have had every one of the vaccinations that your children have, but my children are vaccinated. I repeat, my children are vaccinated. The problem is Mayim is the one who put this out there in the first place. She is the one who decided to write a book and in that book say that she wasn't going to vaccinate her kids. She decided to publicize this in the first place. And this is not some innocuous parenting decision like should you schedule nap time or something. This is an incredibly important public health matter. This is something that can hurt or even kill other people. So acting as though we're trying to, like we're being creepy, like trying to pry into her life or something, you know, ask, like we're, we want specific detailed information about her children, no. We simply want to know what her views are on vaccines as someone who has a platform, as a celebrity with a platform. Some of us do not want to support someone promoting delayed vaccine schedules, promoting the idea that kids get too many, too many too soon, and it overloads their immune system. And I'm sorry, but whether or not your children are vaccinated is just not that personal. You guys know how crazy I am. We are with our children. I call them toddler and tiny baby, like, come on. But even I, I have no problem telling you that my kids are up to date on their vaccines. And if they were not, it would be because of some medical condition where it was contraindicated. That's it. That's all you have to say. She doesn't have to go into specifics about her children. No one is asking for that. So again, I'm super glad she's promoting the COVID vaccine and the flu vaccine, even if it is only for this season, you know, in the specific context of COVID, whatever. It, it's still great. But she clearly still promotes anti-vax talking points. Going back to Beyond the Sling, she writes, the number of recommended vaccines has quadrupled in the past 30 years. We made an informed decision not to vaccinate our children, but this is a very personal decision that should be made only after sufficient research, which today is within the reach of every parent who seeks to learn about their child's health, regardless of their medical knowledge or educational status. Just because we can Google anything we want doesn't mean we're necessarily informed by doing so. There is a reason people go to school and pay a lot of money to go to school to learn about immunology and infectious diseases. There is a reason there are doctors who specialize in infectious diseases. It really is not that simple to understand, which is why it makes sense to listen to those who have actually studied it. If you still think it's that simple, please look at this. Do you understand this or this or this? And please be honest with yourself. If you don't understand this, then you don't have the knowledge to make an informed decision on vaccinations. Please turn to the people who do. By the way, the introduction to Beyond the Sling was written by Dr. Jay Gordon. Dr. Jay Gordon is a pediatrician in Santa Monica, California. More than half his patients have delayed vaccinating their children for measles or decided not to. If somebody with measles walked into your office, 90% of the unvaccinated people that come in contact with them would get measles. How is that not a risk? You just said it. They would get measles. Not meningitis, not the plague, not Ebola. They would get measles. Measles is an almost always benign childhood illness. Isn't it great how many anti-vax MDs there are? That's just, that's just great. This is the person she chose, chose to write the introduction to her book, someone who is well known within the anti-vaccine movement. So you'll have to excuse me for thinking that she agrees with him about measles not being such a big deal and about vaccines causing autism. If she doesn't, maybe clear the air on that. She also promotes Dr. Lauren Fetter and Sears in the resources section of her book. Dr. Fetter recommends homeopathy as a treatment for whooping cough. So water, it's just water. And everyone knows Dr. Sears, his book helped popularize the whole delayed vaccine scheduling and the idea that kids are getting too many vaccines all at once. Does she still agree with these doctors and their recommendations? Does she still agree with what's in her book? Seems like she does, given that 
it doesn't seem like her views have changed at all. Again, going back to her book, she writes, the number of recommended vaccines has quadrupled in the past 30 years, the implication being more is bad, right? Well, in her video, she says, Do I think we give way too many vaccines in this country compared to when I was a vaccinated child? Yes. So she still believes this and she still supports delayed scheduling. Here's why I, a skeptic about a lot of the policies of Big Farm, as well as someone critical of much of the scheduling of vaccinations in this country. Which is a great demonstration of just how little she understands immunology. You have the potential to respond to between a billion and a hundred billion antigens at any given time. That's a one with between nine or 11 zeros. Your body then makes about two billion new lymphocytes each day. Are we overloading that capacity with vaccines? Each antigen that is present in a vaccine, if it's effective, produces about a thousand specific B cells. Each vaccine contains approximately 100 antigens, and each antigen has about 10 parts that can generate unique responses. That means that every infant has the capacity to respond to 10,000 vaccines at any one time. The maximum dose in the current schedule is 11, or 0.1% of the total capacity of the immune system to respond. Is the antigen load increasing? No. In fact, it has decreased substantially since 1960 as a result of two things. One, we removed smallpox vaccine from the schedule as it was no longer needed due to global eradication and it contained about 200 proteins. And two, we switched from vaccinations using dead pertussis bacteria, that's the causative agent in whooping cough, which contained at least 2,000 antigenic proteins, to a vaccine containing only a few proteins from that bacteria. In 1960, an infant by age two was exposed to about 3,000 antigens in their vaccine series. In the year 2000, that was reduced to only 125. Maybe doing your own research isn't so easy after all, even for someone with a PhD. Speaking of PhD, this is possibly the worst part about all of this, at least to me, her background. She is Dr. Mayim Bialik. She has a PhD, and for some people, that lends her a lot of credibility, kind of no matter what she's talking about. Hey, if this super intelligent person who went to school for a really long time thinks that kids are getting too many vaccines, there must be something to it. Doesn't matter that her PhD is in neuroscience. Doesn't matter that she's no more an expert on vaccines than you or I. She went to college for a very long time, a lot longer than most of us. So she must know what she's talking about. Clearly she doesn't. Unsurprisingly, there are a couple of other anti-vax talking points in here as well. Do I believe there's a tremendous profit that is made from vaccines and specifically from making sure that kids show up in school? Yes. No. If you have children who are susceptible to vaccine reactions, contact the CDC. They have plenty of online information about adverse reactions. Why? Because as you can see in the link below, they already have declared that they pay out millions of dollars to people who have permanent damage from adverse reactions to vaccines. No, that is not what that means. Yes, severe adverse reactions to vaccines, although rare, they do happen. And yes, the National Vaccine Injury Compensation Program does exist, but more than 80% of all compensation awards in the vaccine court are negotiated settlements, which allows the government to include language stating it has not concluded based on the review of the evidence that the vaccine caused the injury. Someone receiving compensation does not mean that the vaccine caused the harm. I mean, history has shown us that winning a case often has very little to do with the facts of the matter with science. Examples abound, but my favorite one is the scare over silicone breast implants during the 80s and 90s. The science supporting the claims that silicone from these implants was causing systemic diseases such as cancer, autoimmune diseases, and a panoply of other conditions was never good. In fact, it was weak to non-existent. None of that stopped an avalanche of lawsuits from bankrupting Dow Corning in 95. 
Later, as more studies were carried out, it was found that there was no correlation between silicone implants and the conditions attributed to them. Even so, it wasn't until 2006 that the FDA approved these implants again for cosmetic use. Do you guys remember that? I remember hearing that all the time growing up, that like, oh yeah, they're gonna give you cancer. <laughs> like, all these people who have them, they're getting cancer. It's, it's crazy, man. It's crazy, just stupid things you learn growing up and then you get older and then you're like, like, have you ever had that happen well, where you'll just say something and then like as you're saying it, you're like, wait, is that, wait, is that actually true? I don't know. <laughs> it's just something I've always heard and I never thought about it and I just told this person and I don't actually know if that's true. Whoops. Anyway, she also believes in boosting your immune system. And while in the past I've relied on herbs and supplements and plenty of rest to boost my immune system. No, and also kind of like the worst thing you could ask for right now. She clearly does not understand any of this. And that's okay. What's not okay is acting as though she does and putting these views out there into the world as an authority figure. Again, she's not the worst among the anti-vax crowd, but she is certainly among that crowd. She is certainly one of them. So, you know, let's please stop treating her as any sort of authority figure when it comes to health. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe, support the channel, patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. Guess I should also say onlyfans.com slash unnaturalvegan, posting just random video stuff I don't want to post here, there, posted stuff, I'm trying to do three times a week. I think I can stick with that. Thanks for watching again, and I should have a new video soon-ish. I started up, started up Animal Crossing, because I stopped playing Animal Crossing. It was just like one day, I don't know, one day it was like, no, like I just did, I just didn't, no, not starting it. I think it was like early August. And I just didn't even start the game. And then the next day I didn't. And then the next day, before I knew it, it was a week since I had played. And so I was like, oh shit. So I logged in. I'm picking the weeds. And then it was like, what am I doing? I don't even, this is not fun. No. And so I logged out again. And yeah, once we got the update with the pumpkins, which was weird, right? Because we got the update on the 30th and there were no pumpkins. And I was like, what the fuck? And I look it up. It's like, no, no, no. We got the update today, but we don't get the pumpkins till tomorrow. So I was like, all right, time traveling, bitch. I got me some pumpkins and that was awesome. They're so cute. <laughs> and I started replacing, like, I have so many shrubs. It's dumb. So I started replacing those with the, which a tea olive or whatever they are. And then same sort of thing. I got through quite a few of them. And then I was like, oh, no, no, this isn't fun. It's not fun. So yeah, I played, uh, when I stopped, let's see what it, I played, uh, origami, Paper Mario origami. That was all right. It's cute, you know? And then I played Moonlighter. That was super fun. That was a super fun little, little, uh, kind of like a mix between uh, I would say like Rune Factory and Reseteer, sort of. It was really, really fun. I enjoyed that a lot. I'm sorry I don't have any Animal Crossing updates for you. <laughs> I'm sorry I gave up on my dream of having a cat island and doing my whole like creepy house in the back and everything, which would be super cool right now with the Halloween stuff. I did get that like arch and the spooky light and everything. That makes me want to play, but then I think about all the work and it's like, no. No. Oh, I feel like my curls look greasy today. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Record anyway. Where the hell do you put a lapel mic? Like, is this right? It's pointing up to my face, yeah? Should it be higher? Maybe it should be a little higher? Shit. I've used a lapel mic before, right? It's supposed to go under the shirt, yeah? You're not supposed to have the cord just hanging. Uh-oh. Right? You go, like, under? Uh-oh. Phone don't fall. 
You can do it, phone. Ooh, that feels weird on my tum tum. Oh, do I just do it right here? Eh. Uh, is that right? Let's record something and see what happens. Hi, I'm talking about stuff. I don't remember. Okay. Hi, I'm talking about stuff. I don't remember. Okay. Sounds like shit, doesn't it? Why didn't I look this up before I did any of this? I'm not doing this right. I'm not doing this right. Alright. Well, if not, the camera audio is alright. It's not the worst thing in the world. Don't like my hair. Don't like this. Don't like anything going on. Great. Let's do it. Is a reluctance or... That's terrific. I love when that happens. It's my favorite thing. Why do I always get mad? Like, it's my fault. Turn your phone off.